Hi, I'm Londa. I love to go shopping and see really great garments and know in my own mind I can go home and make one just like it. And much less expensive when you stop to think about simple t-shirts. That's what inspired me to resurrect all I knew about flat pattern technique. Today I'm going to teach you how to take any basic knit top pattern, one of which I'm sure you probably have in your collection, and slash and spread the front pattern piece in order to create a cowl neckline, C-O-W-L. That's a very classic design, as you can see on this black top that I purchased. A cowl is just some more length and some more width at the front. What you'll need to perhaps take the garment to the dressing room and measure is the cowl length. So you see you go from shoulder seam around the drape of the cowl up to the other shoulder seam. And make note of that measurement. That's the cowl length. Look at this garment that I made. It has a really long low cowl. So on this one it actually measures 30 inches whereas the black one was just 10. Look at what you can do. Create a little camisole inside, add some embroidery with your embroidery machine, and you've created a wonderful garment. On this one, you can see I just created it longer in the front and pulled it up and tacked it. You can also make cowl necks out of woven fabrics if you cut the front on the bias. So let me show you how you do this. You simply trace off your pattern on some good pattern tissue. I like this red dotted material that won't tear. So I have the front. I like half inch seam allowances. You're simply going to draw three lines. After you draw a lower neckline to start with. So this really doesn't matter. This one happens to be about two and a half inches lower than a high neckline. So draw your lower neckline and then three lines. Line A and line B intersect the center front and the shoulder seams at a 90 degree angle. Don't let the line come in like this. They have to come at 90 degree angles. And then the third line comes to the single notch area at the armhole, again from the center front. Now exactly where these are placed, it doesn't matter. You're just going to create three different lines. So simple. Now the other thing that you need to mark is the intersection of the shoulder seam and the neckline. So this is a great big red dot and that's the NP, the neck point. Really, really important. All right. Then your next step, I've drawn those lines. You have to have tape. I like the frosted tape and treat yourself to a dispenser. You'll be glad that you did. You're simply going to put this over the seam lines where your lines intersected because we're going to end up cutting these lines but you have to have a little hinge. Let me show you how that works. So we're simply going to cut off and get rid of the original neckline. Now we're going to cut up to but not through the seam line. Same thing here. And then the same thing here. And then come around from the other direction and cut again right up to but not through the seam so that you're leaving a little hinge. Do you see? A little hinge. That being done, you'll want to take a much bigger piece of your pattern tissue and lay it underneath. It's just much easier to start with a much bigger piece. Now, You'll need to extend your center front line so it makes it nice and easy with a grid underneath like this. Okay, these had already spread. So it's like this. You see what happens? So they were down here like this and I had cut them so they might be wallowing around there. But you're going to increase, draw this center front line up much, much higher. That being done, now it's time to actually take these and spread them. How far do you spread them? Well, remember that measurement that you came up with? That is what is your cowl line. And you want to spread it so that it is half of the distance that you measured that you wanted. So if I spread this neck point, remember how important I said that was, to right here, and exactly how the rest of these end up, it really doesn't matter. I know you'll think, oh golly gee, what's happening to the arm's eye? It's going to fall back into place exactly where you want it to be. Every time I spread these, it happens a little bit differently. 
but measuring from that center front line over to your neck point is at about nine and three quarters. So twice that would be 18. 19 and a half inches would be the total drape. Let's say that I wanted to recreate this top. That was a 30 inch cowl line. If I wanted to do 30 inches, it would be more like what you see on this one. I've got this one all taped down. All right. Now you'll need to create the facing. So what I've done is I've drawn a line from the neck point perpendicular right over to the center front that I had extended. Then you simply draw another line two inches up from that. I know this is going to get cut off. That's perfectly okay. Flat pattern is just amazing. I remember when I first learned it, it was like a whole new world opened up. Let's say that I had only gotten this to like um, a total 19 inch cowl line, but I really wanted it to be 30. At that point, what you can do is you can swing this out even further. So here's my center front line. I'm going to anchor my finger here and I'm going to pull this over even more until my neck point is at 15. Just exactly where I have it here. Now in that case, I would have to redraw from the neck point over at a 90 degree angle. So it would be like this, okay? And then two inches up. Now you've got another really cool thing that's gotta happen here. And that is truing up the edges. Down here at the bottom, when I swung this out further, can you see that I drew a straight line to begin with? So that has trued the bottom edge because you see how it would have come up here. You wouldn't want that. You want your hem to go straight across. But the cool thing up here is all I need to do is to take, let's cut this excess off. So we have our cowl line and we have two inches above that to create the facing. Now we're going to fold this down and cut right along the original cutting line of the shoulder. Do you see what a neat kind of weird edge that makes? But when this folds down, it's going to finish it off all inside, just like it is made at the factory, but you've made it at home. Let me show you how I stabilize the back neck with clear elastic and finish off this shoulder seam. I've developed a technique for using clear elastic. It's 3 eighths of an inch. It's a commercial product and it has a nice hard edge on it. Set your machine for a great big wide long zigzag. Put some extra elastic down there to begin with and then Here's the technique. Now remember I've got a half inch seam allowance and this is three eighths of an inch wide. So if I lay the right hand edge just an eighth of an inch from the edge of the fabric and give ever so slight of a tug in front of the presser foot on that elastic, this is going to make the nicest, snappiest, most wonderful, clean finish to net like necklines that you've ever seen. Okay. It was just a little tug in front of the needle. So it's going to look a little puckered just like this. On this one, I've already got that done. You can see the nice stitching there. What's going to happen is that this edge is simply going to turn in and then it would get twin needle stitched. But to finish off the front neckline and finish the shoulder seam, what you need to do is to stabilize through single layer on that funny little corner and simply clip in as I've done here. Then that point where you clipped into is what's going to match up precisely to that back where you put the clear elastic and you're going to put a pin right there. Then you're going to sew this shoulder seam. Then, as you can see on this side, I took the clear elastic and zigzagged it without stretching on the front side. Once you've done that, you need to wrap that facing part around the back and then stitch. Now you need to wrap this very, very tightly. Once you stitch there, 
it will look like this. And then you just pull the facing out, clip off this extra little corner here. Voila, you've got a perfect factory looking shoulder seam and front cowl finish. That's it, how to use flat pattern technique to create a cowl neckline from any t-shirt pattern.